town of Killeen there was a wrath that people said was filled to the brim with gold. Now unfortunately, this wrath didn't have a door or a hole or anything leading into it, and nobody with any sense would ever dig into a fairy wrath. And so there was no way of ascertaining the veracity of this rumour. Until one day, a young man named Harry Stottle was working in a field by the wrath. And as he was working, he was working very hard with the sweat dripping off him. And as he was working, he noticed a doorway suddenly open up in the side of the wrath. Being a very enterprising young man, Harry Stottle, he walks over, he opens up the door, and he goes inside to explore the wrath. He comes into a vast chamber, lavishly decorated, with silk tapestries hanging upon the walls, golden ornaments upon every surface. And in the centre of the chamber, three huge oaken tables, and each one with a heavy iron cauldron upon it, and each cauldron filled to the brim with gold coins. And looking at this, Harry, he thought to himself, Oh no, just a handful of that gold, I would never have to work another day in my life again. And if I'm careful, to only take a little bit from each cauldron, and the fairies, they won't even notice it's gone. They won't know at all. Ah, but no. I came out in my work clothes. I don't have a bag on me. I barely got pockets. How will I carry the gold? And then he realised. He pulled the cap off his head and used it as a little bag, taking just a few coins from the top of each cauldron until the bag was full. Now as he was doing this, a tiny little man, maybe about three feet tall, with a red hat, came in the door of the wrath behind him. And of course, this little man was a fairy. He saw what Harry was doing and he let out a great roar. What do you think you're doing in my wrath, Harry Stottle? At this, Harry let out a roar of fright. He dropped his hat upon the ground, scattering gold coins all over the floor. And he ran out the door of the wrath, past the little fairy in the red hat. And in his fear and his shock and in his alarm, he accidentally left his own hat lying on the floor of the wrath. Harry, he ran home as fast as he could. He never mentioned anything about the wrath, about the door, about the cauldrons, about the coins. Nothing about the little man in the red hat to anybody. But as the days passed, he found his footsteps were becoming slow and lumbering. His limbs started to become stiff and heavy. An illness was creeping over him. And as the days passed by, he became weaker and weaker, paler and paler, until finally he couldn't get out of bed at all. It had gotten to the point where his family was just about to send someone out to get the priest to perform the last rites for Harry. When who should come knocking on the door but the little fairy man in the red hat. He had come to pay his respects to Harry Stutt in his time of convalescence. Now the family, they weren't sure what to do. They didn't know how f Harry would know one of the fairies, but they also didn't want to make the fairy angry. So they let him inside and he went straight to where Harry was lying down, went straight up to his bed and he looked down at Harry and he said, Ah well, Harry Stuttle, you never should have come into my wrath. You never should have touched my gold. Look at the trouble you're in now. And the worst of it, the worst of it, you dropped your fine hat. But don't worry about it, I've brought the hat back to you. And Harry, 
took the hat in his trembling fingers. Looking inside, he saw there was a single gold coin. Now, Harry thought this was some mark of forgiveness, some kind of token that the fairies had forgiven his actions. And he tried to mumble a thank you and an apology. But the fairy just hushed him. Ah, no, 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 never mind, never mind, never mind. That coin's not for you, Harry. That coin's for your family. To pay for the funeral, said the fairy, as he smiled down at him, watching the life fade from Harry Stottle's eyes.